G'day and what is a most glorious morning sitting here on the beach in Lancelin. I wanted to run through with you all of the equipment that I'm taking away for season 2023. There are some new additions and there are some pretty exciting technical developments which I think may excite some of you. Realising that you're probably busy people but still very interested in what I take, let's kick it off with my cameras. I use R3s at the moment from Canon. This is the second one. Why do I take two? Well, I have them strung over each shoulder. One camera will almost certainly have this lens, a 70 to 200 mounted on it. This is a zoom lens, so it covers a range of distances. The other camera will either have a 15 to 35 mil lens, which is a lens for shooting people close up, or this monster, a 600 mil lens. I also take a couple of other prime lenses, prime being not zoom, so they give you a better quality shot, but you've got to use your feet to get closer or further away from the action as the situation requires. It. There's a 135mm lens and there's a 50mm lens. The beauty of this 50mm lens is it shoots at an f-stop of 1.2. What does that mean to the non-photographic? Well, it means that background is very quickly out of focus and produces this lovely soft blur. And it's much better in low light situations. And when we get races that are nighttime races or it becomes very dark and cloudy, that is a fantastic lens. I tend to use that mostly for people shots in the paddock. Oh, and there's one other camera that I take. It's an EOS R5, and I'm using it right now to shoot this video on. And like the R3s, this is a mirrorless camera, and that has a whole lot of benefits. Previously, I was shooting with 1DX Mark III's, which I thought were the bee's knees, but I wouldn't go back to them. I'll tell you why, a couple of reasons. One, weight. The new ones, the R3s, and certainly the R5, which is a much smaller camera, are a lot lighter. When you're carrying them around all day, that's a big consideration. And the other thing I love is the focus on it. I can lock the focus on someone's eye and then keep my finger on the focus dot and move the camera around and it keeps focusing on the eye. It's absolutely sensational. It has made photography a whole lot easier. With the cameras and lenses done, let's go through this particular image here and I'll tell you what each of these items are. Let's start top right and work down. At the very top, we've got a couple of Canon R3 batteries. We've got the R5 battery charger. We've got Profoto batteries for my flash, and I'll get to that a little later on. AAA batteries for powering my Profoto flash. And then I've got this nifty power adapter, which I can use in any country I choose to. And then there's this thing. This is not a baton. This is, in fact, a very nifty and compact light stand. What light do I put on it? I'll get to that a little later on. <laughs> What is this, you ask? It is a device that allows me to mount a bracket on top and then put my phone in here and stick it to a window or any smooth surface. I typically use this on airlines filming landings and takeoffs and also on car windows as I'm videoing where I'm going. This is RAM, this is Manfrotto, and it's an unbelievably good combination. Next up is a Gorillapod. I use that to put my camera on from time to time, if I'm not using this one, which is a bit more compact. What is this? Well, this is a very small tripod for mounting things with a quarter inch socket. So do I need all of this stuff to do what I do? Yes, if I want to do it to the best of my ability. I could certainly cut down on the number of lenses, cameras, and all of this stuff, but I don't think I'd get the same variety of offerings for you as what I do by taking them all. Case in point here, what is this thing? Well, this is a windsock for this small Rode microphone. Now I could use to do video occasionally, which I do from my phone. This is a recording without the microphone compared with using the Rode microphone and with the windsock on top. In windy conditions, this is a necessity. My oldest son bought me that for Christmas. Thank you, Tyler. And to the right of the Gorilla Pod, you'll see a number of power connectors with figure eights on the end. What's in this pouch? Headphones. Absolutely vital for editing on planes. Next up is this thing. Is it a microphone? Yes, indeed it is. But it's actually a radio microphone that slots on the top of this handle. If I want to do interviews with people, and I probably do this mainly in some of the European races where we get a lot of fans and I can spend some time with them for my videos, great bit of kit. And what does it transmit to? This receiver, which sits on top of the camera. And inside this pouch, a whole lot of cables and paraphernalia for the Rode microphones. This high-tech gadget is a Glocal Me unit, and uh, it would be normally what I would use to send pictures from the camera to the internet, but I have something better and I'll go through that a little later in the video. Let's go back to the top now, and this is one of the greatest things I've ever come across. A clamp that allows me to put a camera on top here. So on a plane, I can clamp it to perhaps a baggage locker above and take a wide shot of me on an airline seat. Sometimes I'll clamp this to my camera bag and then put a camera on top and wheel the camera bag through an airport to give me some different looking vision. It's made by small rig and it's not very expensive. 
Next to the clamp is this light from Loom Cube. It's pretty darn powerful and it's an absolute necessity if I'm to record decent looking videos in places away from my home. And it's also got different colors. This is a Canon converter. It allows me to zoom in on some of my longer lenses even further. Let's talk about these three things. The Profoto Flash, great bit of kit, not cheap though. A remote control so I can put the flash away from my camera and fire it remotely. And this plastic stand allows me to mount the flash on a tripod or even on the ground. Hard drives, yes, they're important. Here are two four terabyte drives and then I take another eight terabyte Sabrent drive. Now chances are not many of you will know what this piece of kit is. This is a Stream Deck XL. Well, I use it to save a whole lot of time. When I take a photo of, say, Fernando Alonso, I bring the picture into Lightroom. I'll do some basic editing on it, and then I need to keyword it. So instead of me typing in Control K, F, E, R, and then hitting Enter, this is what I do. One button, and those keywords are inserted. So down the track, when I need to find a picture of Fernando Alonso, I just search on his name, but that's not all I use it for. I have a file with every piece of information about every driver, and instead of me having to press five or six keys to open it up, uh-uh, I press one. I also have keywords for every driver's trainer and all of the 10 team principles. Anything else? Yeah, some of the girlfriends get their own hotkey, as do the reserve drivers, and things like shoes of the paddock, handbags of the paddock, I have a button for those so that I can keyword them. I credit the Stream Deck with making me so much more efficient than I ever could be without it. Over here, there's a power supply and a cable for my Mac computer, which is a MacBook Pro, which is the very top of the line model. It has to be because I go through so many photos in a day and everything has to be quick. Next up, a spare eyepiece for my Canon R3s and a card reader, once again, a high-speed card reader for downloading photos. Then there's the obligatory lens hoods, uh, some double-sided sticky tape for mounting microphones on my chest, a thumb drive, the silver bag, well, they contain sensor cleaners, and occasionally I will need to clean a sensor, but most times I would leave that until I'm at the track because Canon professional services are at all tracks. Uh, no, one they're not, Brazil. And uh, we're allowed to access them for cleaning sensors and even borrowing the latest equipment. And this is a Giotto blower for cleaning the sensors on my camera. And inside this little pouch are a whole host of polarizing lenses. When you rotate the polarizer around, it just makes the colors richer and it gets rid of reflection of glass. And I have polarizers for all of my lenses, including the big one, which takes this little drop-in filter. Next up is this, a Google Pixel phone. Why have I got this? Because I use an iPhone. Well, I've got it for one reason only, and that is when I want to send a picture from my camera, and let's say this is the picture that I want to send, all I do is hit the set button and I watch this screen here, the picture then transmits to this phone via the internet. Look at that, what is that, four seconds? If I press this button down here, here's this one I've just put up. I can now edit that on this phone, and if I'm quick, I could output this with a logo by pressing this button here, because that one doesn't need too much at all. So I press export as, let's stick a logo, where we're gonna put it here. Let's stick it up there. No, let's make it proper. I stick it over here somewhere. And then I will go and output that. I go to my phone here and I look at my pictures. I go to Instagram, I hit plus, I hit post, hit send, and that's now posted. So theoretically, I can take a photo of the cars coming past on the first lap. As long as the internet's reasonable, I can have that picture up on my Instagram page before the cars get around to start their second lap. What are these things for? Well, these are adapters. So when I want to use one of my lenses for my old non-mirrorless DSLR cameras, I can't just put them straight onto the new cameras. I need to space them a little bit further from the sensor, and you do it with these adapters. Up the top left-hand corner, you'll see a whole lot of cables. They're vital. And underneath it is a yellow chamois. Now, why do I have a chamois? Well, it's vital in wet weather because your cameras do get wet, and you need to be able to get the moisture off them quickly. What is this down the bottom corner here in black? Well, these are black rapid straps. I wear these to carry my cameras and you screw each camera on with one of these little metal screwing things and they hang to your side. So I carry my cameras on these all the time. Oh, and there's one thing too that's not showing and that is a monopod, a big long extendable stick that you put your long lenses on. And the final thing is this, it's a foldable soft box. I put a light in the back it shines through the front and it's very soft. And the vast majority of what I take fits into these two bags. 
that's pretty much every piece of kit that I cart around the world. If you've enjoyed this video, I will ask one favor. Could you please hit the like button? And about 40 to 50% of you still aren't subscribed. Go figure. So I'd love you to do that. It only takes a second. It doesn't cost you anything. Hit the subscribe button or if you want a bit more value, pick a membership package and join as a member. You'll find all of my digital images at ProStarPix.com for my wall art, F1 photo book, signed driver prints and merchandise, go to KimElman.com. And for my best images live from the track and all during the week, head to Instagram and search at Kim Illman. Thanks for watching and stay passionate. What is that? Three seconds, I press this button. Oh, f